let's proceed to adjust the camera. Let's go ahead and click on the camera. And then we are going to switch to the top view by pressing 7 in the numeric keypad to the right. Now with the green arrow, we are going to drag it up right there. And then we're going to press R to rotate. And then we rotate it until it is straight with the X axis. Let's go ahead and display the wine glass by clicking on the eye in the scene collection. Now we can orbit by holding the mouse wheel and notice that our wine glass is very big. So let's go ahead and click on it and shrink it. We can press S.6 return. We can press 3 in the numeric keypad to the right to go to the right orthographic projection. And with the blue arrow, we can drag it down to place it above ground. Let's press 0 to go into the camera perspective. Let's press N. And then let's click on View and lock camera to view. Now we can zoom out by using the mouse wheel or by pressing minus in the numeric keypad. We can now orbit by holding the mouse wheel and then move it a little bit to the right or left to adjust. Notice that with the red arrow, we can move our wine glass further away or closer. Let's move it closer and now with the green arrow we are going to drag it left. Let's add a new shape. Let's press shift A, add mesh and select cube. Now we are going to hold the control key and drag this blue arrow up so that our cube is above ground. Let's press 7 in the numeric keypad to go to the top view. And with the red arrow and holding control key, we are going to drag it to the left. Now let's rotate it 45 degrees by pressing R, 45, and then press enter. The 45 should be the numbers on the top of your keyboard. Let's press zero again. And notice that now we get a different view of our cube. Let's press Shift D to duplicate and then let's press Enter. And now with the green arrow we are going to drag it to the right. Let's click again in the middle cube, Shift D, Enter, and then with the green arrow we are going to drag it to the left. Now, let's go ahead and apply materials. So, we are going to click on the material to the right at the bottom, Material Properties. And now we are going to create a new material. And we need to change the base color. So, we are going to click on the base color and select a color that we like. Let's select this one, magenta. Notice that there are no changes in the viewport, and that is because we are in the viewport mode. We will need to click on the render, viewport shading, for a render preview. And now we see it. The problem is that we have no light, so we need to enable our light, and now we can see it. Later on, we are going to adjust the light so it looks better, but it is fine for now. Let's go ahead and click on our wine glass and bring it closer to the camera. Let's click on the middle cube and now let's click on new material. And let's pick another color for the base color. Repeat the process with the right cube. Click on new material and pick another color.
Now, let's click on the ground and let's also select a color. Let's click on new for the texture. And we are going to pick a base color. Make sure that you do not pick a very dark color because it was gonna, going to make the scene very, very difficult to see. So I'm going to change this color. I'm going to make it a little bit bluish. Right? Let's go ahead and add some other shapes. Shift A, add mesh, and we are going to select UV sphere. Now with the blue arrow, we are going to drag this UV sphere above the blue cube. Let's right click on it and select Shade Smooth. Let's press seven in the numeric keypad. Using the red arrow, we are going to drag it to the left above the cube. We can press three in the numeric keypad to adjust the sphere so that it's exactly above the cube. Let's press zero. Let's go ahead and add a new color. So we are going to press new and now we are in material. Now we would like to add some metallic material. We need to adjust the metallic setting. So let's move this metallic setting. Instead of one, let's select 0.9. Now let's click on this cube and let's duplicate it with Shift D, Enter. Then we are going to hold the control key and with this blue arrow, we are going to drag it up exactly above the previous cube. Let's press one for the front view. And now we are going to press R45, enter to rotate it 45 degrees. And with the blue arrow, we are going to drag it so that it is exactly above the other cube. Let's press zero to return to the camera view. And now we need to change the base color. The problem is that if we change this base color, it will also change the base color of the bottom cube since we created a duplicate. Since that is not what we want, we need to click on this number two for the material. And that is going to unlink the color. So now we can pick a different color. Let's pick purple or magenta. Now we would like to make this color transparent, more closer to a glass color. So we need to change the transmission all the way to one. Then we need to scroll down and we need to select the screen space refraction. Sub surface translucency. And also the shadow mode and the blend mode. So the blend mode, we are going to select alpha blend. Now I am going to zoom out so that we can see more of the scene. And holding the shift key and the mouse wheel so that all the objects appear in the camera. Now, let's click on this cube and we are going to press Shift D, Enter to duplicate it and holding the control key 
we are going to drag the blue arrow up. Now we press one to go into the front orthographic view and we are going to press R45, enter. We are going to adjust the blue arrow up so that it is exactly above the previous cue. Let's press zero to return to the camera projection. And now we need to add another color. So let's click on this number two to unlink the colors and select any other color that you like. Let's pick, let's pick yellow. Now, in the render properties, we need to select the screen space reflections. I am going to unlock this lock camera to view and press N to hide it. Now the scene is looking more realistic. We need to adjust the lights. Let's click on this lamp and delete it by pressing X. Now notice that we cannot see much of the scene. Everything has become dark. So let's add another lamp, Shift A, and what we are going to add a light and select Spot. Let's press three in the numeric keypad to go to the right orthographic projection view. And with the blue arrow, we can move it up. We just need to adjust this spotlight. Let's press one. And now we move it with the right, red arrow to the right. And now we can rotate it with R and then we rotate. Let's press seven to go to the top orthographic projection. And then with the green arrow, we are going to drag it down and then we rotate it with R. Now, if we press zero, notice that there is not much we can see. And that is because our lamp doesn't have enough power. Let's go ahead and click on Object Data Properties and let's change the power. Let's select 3000. Now notice that the lamp is a lot stronger. Let's go ahead and press seven to go to the top orthographic projection and we will need to adjust this lamp and create a duplicate with Shift D and Enter. We are going to use the green arrow to move it up. And then we are going to press R to rotate it. Let's press zero. And now notice that our scene is looking a lot better. Let's press Control S to save our work. Let's click on the wine glass and let's add a material. We click on new material and because we want this one to be glass, we need to change the transmission all the way to one. This IOR setting is the index of reflection. So we need to adjust it. Let's make it three. Let's scroll all the way down and select 
subsurface translucency, and also screen-spaced refraction. <laughs> 